Good afternoon and welcome to the Hard Luck Show. I'm your certified, qualified West Side host, Steve Lucky Luciano. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the greatest show on earth. It's the Hard Luck Show. Coming at you today from Lamert Park, California. That's right. Haroon Coffee. Haroon. And across from me, my co-host, my partner. Is Chumahan Bowen, American Indian, elegant barbarian, Southern Californian, here to tear <laughs> shit up again. Yeah. Yeah, just let that sink in. Take that in. Sounds like Bebop. <laughs> the virus took on many oh. shapes. The bear, the elk, the antelope, the elephant, oh. the deer, the mineral, the iron, the copper, the colt, and the rubber, the coffee, yeah. the cotton. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 That's visceral. <laughs> yeah. Palpable. Uh, visceral. Yeah. That's Sushi good, roll. I like man. this. Sushi right. roll. Sushi, Sushi roll. roll. The people. the people. That people, man. It's all about the, the people. people. Yeah. It's all about the people. It is all about the people. The people. Yeah. I was inspired to this by Chase. Right? That's Chase's infinite philosophy. Man, you got tribal with it. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And the minerals, the iron. Vitamin <laughs> on sound. Sean Lewis. Oh, blue eyes. Certified audio professional. Engineer. For the hard. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's it's groovy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's capable of Sean feeling like yeah. a straight G today. Yeah. Oh, he's pimping. Yeah. yeah. No? Is that your slick shit? Oh, blue yeah. eyes. Just staring to these old Friday, blue eyes, honey. And they was chilling like a criminal. There you go. Hey, old blue eyes Who ain't is gonna this, hurt E40? You. No, this is uh, Constable Swanee. Damn, a lot of wrong kind of dope. <laughs> yeah. Just staring to those deep blue eyes. Yeah, old blue eyes. Nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna hurt you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to hop in the car. Baby. Just relax, baby. We're gonna go for a ride. Just look yeah. at the sparkle in my don't, emerald eyes. Don't worry, everything's okay. I, I know more ties. Hit my ties by these blue eyes. Let <laughs> <laughs> your panties slip off you before you know what happened. Big thighs. Yeah, thunder thighs. <laughs> I'm on your big thighs With my blue eyes I'm your big thighs And you realize My eyes tell no lies And always tell a lie About my size <laughs> And every little prize I'm gonna take you From the lows to the highs mm. <laughs> You're being foolish But let me show you How to be wise <laughs> Alright Alright enough pimp shit though. Yep right. Got right. old blue eyes right. Now Now he, He's that brother With the good With the light eye <laughs> Hey um So who do we got here today? Uh, we've, got a, we've got a very illustrious, a very just amazingly talented, uh, one of the greatest actresses to ever grace any screen. Ooh. Yes. Any screen or any stage. Wow. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, who is sophisticated, mm. very continental, mm. very urbane, mm. right? Um, she's a, a beautiful import. Yes. Um, um, very close absolutely. to a very good friend of ours. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, she's from Lebanon, mm. which I'm trying to fill as much time as I can for this long intro because she, po- she picked this song. Yes. <laughs> and we might have to take a joint from Chichin Chan <laughs> <laughs> so that we say it right and we don't say it wrong. When does this guy start singing? And about uh, three minutes. Three, four minutes from the mm. intro, I mm. think. Right. We well, might get to have, hear him at the end of the you show. You have to wait for it. <laughs> we might get to hear him at the end of the show. <laughs> right. So usually, like, our common practice is we say to the guest, right? Mm. And, and the guest, you just heard her voice. The, tell me something. Say something to me right now, guest. 
What do you want me to say to you? <laughs> you know what? That right there <laughs> answers your question. It doesn't matter because it's the way you say it that matters. Oh, right? Am I the first person to tell you that you have a, a very exotic accent? That no. It, no? No. Listen to that. <laughs> Listen to that. But I appreciate it anyway. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, see that? Yeah. So um, that's our guest. And usually, oh, here, here we go. Here you go. This is what she wanted to be introduced on. Beautiful actress is lost in a reverie. She's got her finger up in the air. Eyes are closed. She's singing. First ever on the Hard Luck Show. Here she goes. People pay thousands of dollars to hear this. <laughs> I can't compete with him. Uh, she's got a little bit of a blush now. She's gotten a little bit. Where do I saw his name? Yeah, her eyes are watering. Yes. Look at that. She's getting teary eyed on Nearly her. perfect teeth. I don't know how she knows that. There she goes. Listen to this voice. What's he saying? He's saying. He's saying, Lebanon, a piece of heaven. Uh, <laughs> There's a joke. For the there. generous. Wait, wait. Uh, in summer, it's not stingy on water, and for Ooh. for who, for any um, how do you say a visitor, it has open uh, hands. It's a tribute to Lebanon and the hospitality of Lebanon and the Lebanese oh. people. We are very known with that. You know, we like to have people in our homes and our countries and. We treat them so well because it really makes us happy. Right. It's nice. Not stingy with the water. <clears throat> not stingy with the a water. A certain friend of ours, I think I can now see why a certain friend of ours has um, head over heels fallen for you. <laughs> yes. Not stingy with the water, I think. Yeah. <laughs> very good. But we very might open, know somebody who loves you. Very hospitable. <laughs> mm. I will trench your thirst. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I right. might know a guy that's been captured. I might know a certain somebody who's been <laughs> swept away by those waters. I might know somebody. <laughs> there might be a certain somebody. <laughs> that will keep uh, unknown for the moment. Yes. Everything is mysterious around you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I like uh, to keep it that way. Oh, <laughs> so um, we have with us today a very special guest. Alexandra, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The yes. great actress. Um, she's here in L.A. Um, and actually what we're going to talk about today a little bit yes. is, you know, recently Lebanon has been in the news. Yes. Yes, it has. And let's break this down for a second. It was in the news because there was a massive explosion in the port of Beirut. Correct. Does everybody listening remember at some point in time when your feeds came through a horrific explosion? Right. Not many that we've seen right. up close. Looked like a nuclear bomb. Right. There was a mushroom cloud. Right. And it was this reddish billowing smoke and this giant mushroom cloud. And, you know, when I don't know what you guys thought. I didn't see what the headline was yet. So my first thought was, shit, war started yeah. or some kind of terrorist oh, attack. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a nuke. I thought somebody nuked in this country, wherever, whatever I was watching. Without a doubt. I was like, that, that's, those are baby nuclear missiles. I was like, yeah. That's, and I was like, all right, World War Three. here we go. We yeah. got Trump in the White House and World War Three. I woke started. up in the morning and my partner actually a certain somebody, a certain somebody who uh, every morning <laughs> the first thing he does when he wakes up is check the news and he said, hey, uh, I have bad news bombing in Lebanon. And I was sure that it was the war because Lebanon has been on the verge of not knowing what's going to happen for the next, uh, for the last, uh, what, eight, uh, nine months now since the break of the Lebanese revolution in, uh, in October 2019. Um, so, yeah, I woke up with this news and I didn't know what happened. And Hold on a we sec. still. You woke up. You got the news. I got the news. I immediately went in, on, on my phone and I realized that it's actually an explosion that happened in the port because there, mm. has, uh, there was 2,750 uh, 2, tons of uh, ammonium nitrate that was 
irresponsibly stored in the mm. in the in the port of Beirut, which is the heart of Lebanon, which is surrounded by uh, residential areas and nightlife areas. It's a very densely populated area. Right. So, so yeah. like, just to give you some context, because you know, am- ammonium nitrate, right, is is normally used as a fertilizer. And Correct. if you remember the the Oklahoma City bombing, right? So, what exploded in Beirut was what two thousand seven hundred fifty tons. Yeah. Right. Now, if you remember what Timothy McVeigh did in the Oklahoma City bombing and how it shredded that half of that federal building, Mm -hmm. that was only two tons of ammonium Mm -hmm. nitrate. It's 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 uh, it's an so, unim- unimaginable amount of ammonium nitrate that exploded, and, and, and this is what made this explosion the it ranked it the third biggest explosion in the history of humans, right? Which comes after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm-hmm. So and yeah, we, it looks like that. And right. we yeah. were very, we were kind of lucky that it happened in a in a COVID time where there was not a lot of activ- activity. Because right. if this happened at the time that it happened, in the place that it happened during normal times, I can guarantee you that there would be thousands of people dead. Right. Because right. these streets are very busy. Right. They're very busy streets. And densely packed. And densely packed. And uh, there are uh, uh, two big neighborhoods of nightlife where really almost all the Lebanese people go there and gather there and, and spend some time together there. These are the two streets left for us to actually gather, you know? I saw a picture. It had to be uh, many, many blocks away. Maybe even my, I have no idea how far it was. But cars were turned over. Right in the street. This was uh, this was like really a few, uh, like maybe one mile away from mm. the explosion. Yeah. But the radiation went. I don't know how many, like about ten kilometers. Uh, the shock wave. The, the shock explosion. wave. Yeah. Th- there are so many buildings that are sh- sh- that their base is shook that needs to be teared down. There are historical neighborhoods that have been severely damaged. There are museums. There are. So many residential, 3,000 people, 300,000 people, excuse me, found their Sam's cells homeless in a matter of seconds. Right. And now these 300,000 people are on the streets, not knowing where to go, not having anything or anywhere to go. This is why there are so many NGOs and, uh, uh, and uh, individual uh, initiatives right. that uh, deployed themselves on the floor and they, they put up some tents and whoever can host people in their homes are hosting people. So and yeah. the Lebanese hospitality is needed now more than ever. Definitely, and it has shown itself. And every, all the youth, especially, really, right. all the young people went down on these streets and started cleaning them and cleaning uh, the, 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 the unimaginable amount of uh, debris, you know. And, uh, and the, the thing is that the government is not doing anything about it. It's the people that are on the street cleaning the streets and right. trying, to, trying to help and trying to get funds to be able to rebuild some of the damage. So, so, so to back it up for a second, though, ammonium nitrate, right? We know it's fertilizer or whatever, but like, like why? Like, what the fuck is that for? Like, I don't get it. Like, how does that work? So I was reading around, looking up stuff. So ammonium, so all plants need nitrogen, okay? They need the nitrogen in order to do the turning the sun into sugar um, uh, process. In order to do that, nitrogen is required. So in all this, like, whenever you treat the soil, you've got to figure out some way to get nitrogen into it. One of the easiest ways, the cheapest way, it's very cheap, is to use ammonium nitrate to put that into the soil so that the, the roots absorb it and they, you can yield these amazing crops. But the only other use for ammonium nitrate is also for explosives. Bombs. They mix it with TNT. They used it in World War I with something else. And anyway, it's used in war all the time. So in like 2014... There's this cargo ship, and it's full of this 2,700 tons of uh, ammonium nitrate going Mm -hmm. to Mozambique. Okay. 
And somehow, because I'm like, well, why the fuck are there 2,700 tons of, of ammonium nitrate for, like, years stored improperly in, some, in Beirut? Right. Like, what the fuck is that? Well, right. we don't even know why it's that. We know that the, the captain of the ship abandoned it. Yep. We don't know why exactly, and we don't know how the Lebanese government seized it and stored it without the knowledge of anybody, of course, uh, in, in the port of Beirut. Listen to that. So think about that. So that would be the same thing as you're down in San Pedro... San Pedro, right? L.A. Harbor. Right. Port. And, and, and the American government seizes, right, like uh, 2,000 tons of sticks of dynamite. Mm -hmm. And they store it, you know, in some U-Haul storage building right next to your house. And nobody told you that. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is this is exactly what happened. And the the, the port uh, uh, representatives and the people who are working in the port were for, since 2014 are... Uh, and are demanding from the government to come and take this ammonium nitrate and store it somewhere else. And right. the government didn't do anything about it. So this raises question, why did you want it there? And what were you doing with it? Have you used some of it? Meanwhile, we have absolutely no idea who was benefiting from this, if there was a plan for this ammonium nitrate. And this is what's really enraging the Lebanese people now. Let me tell you, just give you a little overview of yeah. what, what preceded this explosion. Yes. Okay. Lebanese civil war ended in 1990. Yes. A lot of aid from all over the world started pouring into Lebanon to be able to... What was the civil... Who were the two sides of the civil war? There was a lot of phases of the civil war. It all started... Uh, uh, Lebanon is, has always been a very sectarian uh, uh, country, okay? Groups of uh, uh, Christians and Muslims and Sunni and Shiite and Maronite and Catholic, and they all want a piece uh, uh, of the land. And and so after the, after the, the, uh, the French uh, colony, uh, the French were colonized, uh, colonized the Lebanon. And then in uh, 1947, the Lebanese uh, had their independence. Right. So, and there was a, a kind of, they, they constructed the government putting the Christian into power. In charge. Yes. Uh, Lebanon was uh, a little bit more Christians than, than, uh, than Muslims. So the Christian had the power. Got it. Uh, and this, of course, bothered the, the rest of the groups in Lebanon. So there was already tension. Then when uh, the, the, uh, the Israel invasion of Palestine happened, there was a lot of uh, uh, the, the whatever, I mean, happened. In the, there the, the Palestinians started coming into Lebanon. So the force oh. between Muslims and Christians started shifting. There was more Muslims than Christians. I and then the it. tension started rising between the Palestine, the Palestinian, and whoever got affiliated with the Palestine, who is the Shuai and uh, the Shiite and all the pan Arab Shiite. Shiite Muslims and the people who wanted a pan Arab region. Pan Arab meaning unifying a much larger Arab yes. country that would be able to finally uh, deal with the United States, China, and the larger nations. Exactly. Got it. Yes, making united forces of Arab uh, states. Right. Uh, so there had, the, the tension rose between this side and the Christian side. Did you and have any family members that were involved in the civil war at all? Uh, family members, direct family members, no, but a lot of uh, friends of my parents and everybody was involved one way or another. The civil really? war, yes, the civil war lasted from 75 to 1990. I was born in the civil war. You uh, were? Yes, I was born. And I remember, I mean, I've, I've, I've lived the Civil War, the bombing, the being in the bunkers. and uh, What is that like? Uh, I mean, I was, a, I, was, uh, I was about eight or nine years old, eight years old when the last phase of the Civil War happened. Right. And I remember very clearly uh, my aunt picking me up from school and running towards the house. And I could hear and see the, the missiles over our heads. Arriving home, going into the uh, garage, like the the, the the basement, the basement of our building. Actually, yeah. we stayed there for about a week, and then there was a bomb that came into our building and perforated four floors and exploded in the in the basement. Right. We didn't know what happened. Really, my uncle and my father were exactly where the bomb uh, uh, exploded a few seconds before that. They were walking back into the room where we were all gathered. Yeah. And the explosion happened. It was complete mayhem. We ran away, smoke, suffocating. 
w uh, we ran away to our uh, neighbor's uh, building who they had a bigger basement and a yeah. much more secure basement and all the neighborhoods gathered there and this is where we spent the last period of the civil war which was about a month or a little longer and I remember clearly everything. I remember people running into the basement, all bloody, screaming. I remember what a woman. What did you think? You're like eight or nine. What are you I thinking? didn't. I didn't. You know when you're so young and when you have parents that do everything to protect you and even to protect your psyche and try to tell you it's okay, everything's going to be okay. And we were all kids gathered and playing, but of course we were scared. Sure. And I didn't know how much this period of my life influenced me. Until years and years later, I was about 18 years old, and I was in the living room with my mother watching TV, and suddenly I hear something like, and it started intensifying and intensifying, and I felt something that I've never felt before, a fear that I've never felt before, and all my body was shaking, and in the end, it, something exploded in the sky, and I swear to God, all these memory, all this fear, everything came back to me, and it was the most horrifying seconds that I lived in my life. I honestly thought I was going to die. I jumped, I don't know, like 10 meters ahead, and I was looking at my mother. I wanted to tell her I love her, and I couldn't say anything. And I, I felt like I was, I, we were going to die. And this is when I understood how much ingrained in me this war is, you know? So this is like 10 years or 20, like 12 years later, you're having kind of like a flashback. Yes, I understood that I, all of this is inside my body. Does you know? it still come out now like that? Yes, it does. When I, when I, it happened again in the 2006 uh, when there was also a war between uh, Israel and Hezbollah. Uh -huh. uh, and again, there was uh, uh, all the, uh, you, could see, uh, you, see, you could see missiles in the sky. You could see the uh, military airplanes, the Israeli military airplanes uh, flying over the suburbs of uh, Lebanon. And... Of course, I relived everything. So now what is going on in Lebanon, everybody is reliving all of these things, and people cannot take it anymore. Right. But let me take it from there. After the civil war in 1990, a lot of aid started flowing into, the Leba into Lebanon uh, to be able to rebuild this country. You mean uh, aid like financial money, not financial aid to the disease? No, no, no. Yes, aid. Yeah, yeah. Aid. You're like, a lot of AIDS came into Lebanon. No, 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 no. no. Right. Yes, thank you for putting yeah. that out. <laughs> a lot of uh, financial aid uh, right. came from all over the world to the Lebanese government to rebuild the country. But as corrupt as the Lebanese government has always been, they took this money and put it in their pockets, and they used very, very little of it. They really robbed about 85% of all the aid right. that came from oh. uh, foreign uh, countries. Yeah, because it's got to, listen, imagine you're in a small country, smallish country, and this aid is super necessary, but when they flow the money, they gotta, it's got to go through the proper channels. And imagine, I mean, imagine how many beaks got to get wet before that money actually makes it all the way. Yeah, yeah a nickel yeah. trickles in behind the dollar. Man. You know what I mean? If that. Yeah. Hey, before we go I mean, any further, situate, yeah. can you situate, because Americans are notoriously terrible when it comes to geography. So situate where exactly Lebanon is in relation to, like, for instance, Israel. So Lebanon has two borders, uh, with Israel from the south, yep. and then the rest of it is Syria. Okay, where, where all that shit in Syria is going on. Where all that shit in Syria is going on, and also the war in Syria af uh, affected Lebanon and the Lebanese economy a lot because we had more than 2 million Syrians coming into Lebanon, right. and now they are in Lebanon. Right. You know, so it's like one thing after the other that is really deconstructing Lebanon. Right. So Lebanon is in the, in the Middle East. It's in the uh, West Asia. Okay. Uh, it has to the n to the north and to the uh, to the east Syria, to the south Israel, and to the west the Mediterranean Sea. On right. the other side of Lebanon, you have Cyprus. On the other side of on the uh, east west of the Lebanon, you have Cyprus, and then you have you you have Italy and right. Greece. You know, if you want to go to the Mediterranean, so this is where we are situated. Right, got it. Uh, and. Uh, 
so this uh, the Lebanese government put all the money in their pockets, right. which left Lebanon with more than a hundred billion dollars of debts. Right. And uh, this debt led Lebanon also not to have, and the Lebanese people, uh, not to have uh, basic needs such as electricity, uh, water, uh, a good uh, healthcare system, and, uh, and a good educational system. We have a great educational system, but it costs a lot of money. It's not, it's, you know, it's, you don't have free schools. All the governmental schools suck. Right. You know, if you want your children to have that's a good education. To, that's what they're trying to do here. I, I don't agree, honestly, because it, education and health should not be uh, uh, elitistic. It should, uh, this is the basic needs of every human being right. Right. living in a country. Uh, this is my, my opinion. Uh, so it led Lebanon to, to, to this huge debt and not having basic needs. Right. Now, uh, in October 2019, the Lebanese government uh, decided to put a fine on WhatsApp. On which, WhatsApp, on, which is the app that's free which is for a, everyone else in the world. Yes. And that's what they use to talk to their people back in the old country. Yes, and it's, it's widely used by Lebanon and it's uh, by Lebanese people and by all the world. So right. at this point, and I'm really, really making everything very short because there's a lot of shit that happened. You're all right. This You're all right. And Educate and, us. Yeah. Yeah. This is, a, this is a highly... You know, just so you know, our show is a, a highly cultural, very upper crust. Yeah. Highly lethal. <laughs> highly lethal. <laughs> highly lethal. <laughs> highly lethal show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so before this also there was a sanitarian crisis uh, in Lebanon because the government was putting, ha- had a dam in the middle of a residential area also. Yeah. And the resident of the area said, we can't take it anymore. Go do something about it. Build a dam. Do something about it with the, all the fucking money that you're stealing from the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when this dam was closed, uh, there was nowhere else to throw the Lebanese garbage, and the Lebanese garbage started being accumulated in the streets of Lebanon, what? and it's still happening. Wow. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait, wow. a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have this, and then you have the cherry on top of uh, uh, the the government wanting to fine uh, WhatsApp. So the Lebanese people couldn't take it anymore. They, the, and this is when the uh, in October 2019, uh, a peaceful revolution <sighs> right. uh, started with the people, and it started uh, uh, it started peacefully, and then it got a, a little violent. But it's mainly the military and the government side that is inflicting violence. Oh, we, we we understand that here in the states. Oh yeah. yes, uh, I know we have you a do. Ton, tons <laughs> of peaceful protests, and then these cops either out, outwardly or some of them yeah. uh, are in disguise and they come in and try to incite violence. Exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it ha- I think it happens all over the world, to right. be honest. So they're, but they're but not at handling, certain extent, yeah. So they just went backwards or just stopped handling all the rubbish? Yeah, 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 yeah. There, was, uh, uh, there was ideas and there was thoughts, but it's, it's still accumulating and there's still not a substantial... Uh, what do you resident? do with it when it's like that? It's just in the streets? It's just in the streets. It's fucking, it's, um, it's crazy. crazy. And then this they put nuts. calcium on it so it doesn't stink. But then when you have rain, That's crazy, when bro. you have, when it rains, it's acid rain. I'm right. telling you that, I mean, there are, it's, it's crisis over crisis over crisis. And the Lebanese insane. people it's having environmental. It. You know we, we yeah. you know, here in the United States, we, we would be willing to donate our president to Lebanon <laughs> to help lead you. Please, are, would we you don't accept that? Would you no accept that? No way, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what a masquerade anyway uh, so okay the revolution started and um, uh, and the Lebanese started defaulting on the debt of course mm. so the Lebanese currency lost 80% of its value wow. of its value dude imagine that Steve dude yeah. imagine you got 100 bucks in your pocket and now it's worth 20 bucks now it's worth 18 cents it's insane it's insane it's insane it's insane I mean and, and then in May 2020 a capital control was implemented okay so what does that mean the government blocked money and it, they were granting a, a withdrawal limit of $200 uh, 
per month per per account to stop people from whipping their money out of the bank yes really? because they want it and because the bank are mainly owned by government by p- politicians and by people in the government Bitcoin. and on the other hand also Bitcoin. yes Yes, I know. And people are <laughs> No, people started actually, but really? I, but yeah, yeah. I mean, they're more and more aware of it and they're more and more aware of its potential. But also when you have no money and you don't have access to your money and to your savings. Yeah. You what can you do about it? You're being it? held hostage. Yes, and this is exactly what was going on with the Lebanese people. I mean, there was so 80% wow. uh, 80% of the Lebanese currency has lost its value. 50% of the Lebanese people are living under poverty line. 40% uh, it's mm. now the employment is uh, 40% is going to go worse and worse and of worse of course Uh, and of course, uh, uh, banks uh, started loaning the government, and then because also the banks are owned by government, so the government was uh, doing profit from the from the high uh, rates of loans. Unbelievable. Yeah. One thing that triggers the other, and then you have uh, COVID that came COVID, and, yeah. and made. I mean, the richest countries of the world are suffering from COVID. So right. Yeah. Lebanon is completely was completely destroyed by it. Uh, and now we had on August 4, 2020, we have this massive explosion. Right. And and just so people understand, so um, uh, ammonium nitrate, you know, usually it comes in like white pellets when it's first created. But part of the problem is it's highly water soluble. So What happens is when you store a huge amount together and there's moisture, it turns into one giant fucking rock. And all it takes is a spark. A spark and that entire giant like 2750 ton or fucking rock of ex- explosives just blows up. So think about that. And that's why there was people were saying there's a mushroom cloud and they were questioning it because it wasn't a nuclear bomb. But the, the explosion was so powerful that the shockwave of air that comes out from that compression created that ring that gave that sense of uh, atomic bomb. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. It's not because I mean it's not only atomic bombs that make this mushroom. It's it, it's right. the you, mushroom depends on the strength of the explosion. And I learned also that the red that came off is actually the surface of ammonium nitrate that wasn't blown. Uh, that didn't take fire, so it it goes into the air and creates. And because this is there why was an this Italian, is there was an Italian scientist who was saying actually there must have been weapons in there because um, ammonium uh, nitrate doesn't turn red when it burns. He was saying because it was red, he thinks that there were actually uh, military missiles inside that inside that. Oh really? I haven't uh, heard about I, that. I saw that last night because I was researching for the show. Yeah, <laughs> I knew you would do your research. Of course, <laughs> I was waiting for it. Uh, you know, I was going to do my research too. <laughs> you know, oh, you didn't I say, saw you researching. You didn't say, oh, Lucky's, Lucky's just you about a second ago. <laughs> Lucky's going to do his research. For I sure. knew Lucky was going to do some research on vegan cookies later. So you have, you are, you have a fundraiser. I do. Did I, I rush that? Did you have more? I, to add? I, yes, yeah, I just ahead, wanted add. to put uh, people in a Please, picture we of have what the happened. Eminent, the most uh, highly decorated actress here. Yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so when the explosion happened, as I was saying, 300,000 people found themselves homeless in a matter of seconds. Uh, major hospitals. Yes. That's crazy. 300,000. That's a lot. That's yes. a lot of people. Uh, they're, they're currently homeless. We have. Like uh, overnight. Not overnight, in a second. Right. Boom, the explosion happened. Right. Here, we have to leave. Here There in Los no Angeles, else. we've slowly watched the homeless population grow and grow. Imagine just like in one second, you have 300,000 people on the street. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. That's it's like families. 100 it's families. And it's 50,000 coliseums filled up. Wow, yeah. Wow, look at you. Did you do your research, you son of a bitch? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Did you Great. see his eyes? The lucky gave me the how do you like, like them yeah. apples eyes, huh? Yeah. Take how that. do you like that? Really? Take yeah. that. Yeah. How's yeah. that feel? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you some fucking facts and figures, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> how you like that? Now that in, in, in a second, what was the uh, what what's the current death rate right now? Death It's uh, about 170 people, and honestly, uh, and like thousands injured. Thousand like. M- 
more than 400,000 people injured, hundreds of them still in a very, very critical uh, condition. Uh, about 80 people are still missing, among them are kids. And Damn. yes, we don't know if they're in the sea, if they're under the rubble that hasn't been yet uh, dug up. Uh, the major hospitals in the capital were uh, rendered inoperable. Uh, they were, and the people died in and it. And you still have COVID on top of all Of this. course, and now this COVID is flaring up, of course, because people are on the streets helping and... Uh, and uh, right. the other, other uh, all of the hospitals are, that are still operable are completely overwhelmed, oh. you know. Mm. Uh, so the Lebanese people uh, and Lebanon are completely unable to handle this crisis by themselves. This is why uh, uh, help from all over the world is really critical at this point. Right. And it's even more critical that this help does not go into the hand of the government. Uh-huh. Because yeah. let me tell you something. In Do the it. midst yeah. of all this fucking craziness, yes. some aid, some medical aid uh, came from abroad. I don't remember if it was from Turkey or Tun- Tunis, Tunisia. I, 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 not disappeared. F- suddenly, you find them in the fucking pharmacies and you find people on the street trying to send, uh, sell them. Instead, mm-hmm. because it went into the government's hand. So even in this crisis, the wait, government wait, wait, wait. is so not saying, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, go ahead. So you're saying that medical supplies came in yeah. and they were somehow got the government... Ended up in the grain market. Were, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Uh, yes. This is why it's really critical that any aid that come to Lebanon now uh, is directed to NGO. NGOs and to uh, initiatives, and there's a lot of NGOs and there's a lot of individual initiatives that are really doing amazing job now on the ground. And this is also what I want to promote. So we started, me and three other Lebanese people living between here and New York, we decided to start a fundraiser through GoFundMe. Okay. And uh, we are directing the fund to an initiative that started uh, with the Lebanese Revolution in October 2018. It was a very spontaneous uh, uh, initiative from the people to the people, you know, and it started really slowly growing. And there's a team of doctors and, uh, and architects and a lot of volunteers that are, that are working in it now. It's called Liban Truck, Liban Truck, which means they started by, uh, um, how do you say, when you take and give without money, like a truck? Barter. Barter, yes. So they started this initiative to, uh, to uh, kind of educate people. Nice one, Stevie. <laughs> Listen, I love it. This falls wrong. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, it is, it, it is so terrible what is happening. This explosion in Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's terrible. I, uh, this I, show I, is unedited. <laughs> and it's real, man. You know what it reminds me it's, it's like it in the movie theater actually, when it gets real good and it, you start slurping up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're really into it, you yeah. it reminds me. Yeah. It reminds me like, hey man, what are you doing? Hey, you know what? <laughs> it reminds me of that scene in Goodfellas when they go out for the second date and Joe Pesci with that Jewish lady and her friend. Mm-hmm. And, and Joe Pesci's he's like, I don't know what happened. I, mean, I hope he's not sick. I mean, I hope he's okay. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait. So, let, so yes. Liban Truck. Liban Truck. L I B A N T R O C. Liban Truck started uh, with the rise of the revolution in uh, October 2019 and um, it was actually uh, taking case by case, uh, helping really people, uh, uh, families on the verge of starvation, uh, individuals with, uh, with medical emergencies and they work in a very transparent way. Uh, uh, they're my friends actually and I know them very well. Uh, so uh, this was before the explosion. After the explosion they deployed... <laughs> <laughs> Stop that, Stevie! Come on! I'm sorry, Show it's getting respect. interesting. Jesus Christ, man! You have all my attention. I, do I? Yes. <laughs> all right, please. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, uh, since the explosion, uh, they deployed their teams um, uh, on the streets of Beirut. They're distributing food water, uh, medical supplies. They built tents and squares in Beirut to also give people some kind of uh, shelter. And uh, they're also... Oh, my God, man, what shall we do with this guy? He's thirsty. He's okay, thirsty. It's okay. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. How can now you, I'll stop. How can you... <laughs> now <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> and I won't do it again for the rest of the show. Okay, thank you, Stevie. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> 
again, Live on Track. No Live on Track. Live on Track is now helping uh, families, individuals, uh, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an individual. Uh, initiative, right. initiative made by a Grass group roots. of gla- exactly by a group of people. Actually, before the explosion, they were in the process of uh, resist, uh, registering the the, the initiative uh, to make it an NGO. But with everything that happened, they're just doing whatever they can now to help people. Right. And this is where our money is uh, is going. Uh, it's so not going into a politician's n- no, po- pocket? Nope. Okay. Nope, nope, right. nope. It's going to this group of people who are doing an amazing job helping uh, Lebanese victims. Sure. People in need. Sure. And it's really, it's not only Beirut that has been hit. It's all of Lebanon. This is, this is affecting all of Lebanon. The port that was the... Uh, uh, where 80% of uh, uh, important supplies such as food and medicine and all of that was coming from is now destroyed. Right. So, starva- is, we are, Lebanon is going to go into a starvation phase. Uh, okay, uh, so phase. The, Go, the GoFundMe, how yeah. do they give you the, how do, how do we give so you the money? you go uh, on the Liban Truck uh, Instagram account and then the link is in the bio. It's as simple as that. Liban okay. Truck, L I B A N T R O C. Liban Truck. L I B A N T R O C. Liban Truck. Liban Truck. Instagram account, link in bio. It's as simple as that. Very good. You can do $10, it's great. You can do $20, it's great. Anything will make a really huge difference this is now how people is gonna how lebanon is gonna heal itself by the generosity of people abroad let me ask you this yeah how the hell are the lebanese people going to replace this government it's well they are they they were on the streets since uh, october 2019 demanding a, 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 a reform you know it's a very very difficult situation now and this is why there's the intervention of france of uh, uh, of the united states of britain uh, and on the other side you have the intervention of iran and turkey and th- now there is really an international discussion about what the hell is going to happen in Lebanon and to be honest nobody knows because uh, a part of the Lebanese want one thing and the other part want a different thing so there uh, we're even talking about a lot of tension now in Lebanon we don't know what the hell is going to happen I'm going there and I'm I'm honestly I'm concerned are you able to travel there from here with yeah. during COVID? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you can. You have mm. to do a test uh, like two, three days prior to your uh, travel. Have you had a COVID test yet? Yes. I did too. Did, have you had a COVID test? No. I had a COVID test. Uh, did they stick the swab in your nose? They did. I had it twice. Why did you have to take the test twice? Well, I, had it, I did it first just uh, for prevention, you know, because I got sick and I wanted to make sure. Right. And now the second time because I'm traveling. So. Right. Did, has any, have any of you guys gotten like a little bit of a cold and you're like, oh, shit, this is COVID coming. Fuck yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you get better and like... Every time I have a sore like, throat, yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then you get a little bit better and you're like, maybe I'm all right. Yeah. Steve's saying no. I don't even think like that. I had to get a test because I went up to my sister's wedding. Sure. And did they stick the things in your nose or in your ass? Which one did you do? No, I stuck the things in my ass. They right, stuck right, the things right, in my, my nose. nose. Yeah. <laughs> and, they twi- and they twisted it. And they twi- what kind of results did you get from the ass? Oh, uh, I actually, I got some great results. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you, we, do you want to <laughs> share them with us? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> 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 they told me they were testing me for COVID. They put some big old Q-tips in my rear end. And they never got a hold of me. I never got a result. Oh, nothing. <laughs> oh, I got a result. <laughs> um, no, so, okay, so you had to take the COVID. You're going to yeah. go back. Going, when are you going back? When? Yeah. Um, like the, the, in, a, in a couple of days. I'm yeah. going to throw a name at you. Go ahead. And when I throw the name at you, I just want you to, the first thing that pops in your head. Go right? ahead. Khalil Gabran. The soul of Lebanon. Do you know that... And you didn't know this. I'm going to share it with you. Okay. <sighs> Go ahead. One of the first books my mom gave me. The Prophet? Was The Prophet. Wow, man. Right? It's such a beautiful and, book. And uh, I was probably about, um, you know, she had all of Khalil's writing. 
Africa. But, she did? Yeah, you but the prophet me. was her, pre- was her favorite. You told me and that. And she gave me the book. I think it was 13. And she gave me that book. And she inscribed it. And I remember <clears throat> attempting to read it, thinking that I was comprehending. It's very you know? philosophical, yeah. And um, not really getting it. And, and eventually lost the copy she gave me. And, you know, then in my, I remember my early 20s, I was at... Um, the Bodhi Tree. Do you remember the Bodhi Tree? Yeah. Great bookstore. Yeah. Like, one of my favorite places. When they used my to have mo- bookstores. Right. And my mom used to go to the Bodhi Tree because she would always get her friend's gifts there. So yeah. I'd always go in there. So I knew this store had a lot of relevance to me. So I, go, I was in there with a friend and I saw it. I'm like, let me grab this. You know, a new copy of it. And I remember me reading, rereading The Prophet in my early 20s. Mm. And it, diff- I mean, things hitting me like, uh, maybe thoughts or ideas or concepts that I'd had inside or thought that never put words to. Yeah. It really, really wrong with me. It resonated with me. And as I got older, I would look at these things and a lot of the messages that he was sharing have gained in their depth and yeah. their meaning to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, I just, oh, like, boom, boom, I just, uh, when I first met you, we, I mentioned it. I when think I you did, met, yeah, now I But uh, it's honestly, like, in my top three books in the world. Wow, that's nice. It's one of them. I have so much, like, his quotes and just every, everything he was about and what he talks about is just... Uh, so, you know, I, I think even when Paul or my... Uh, when Mr. Uh, Jones told me that you guys were going out, he said, yeah, I should let me... I instantly... Remembered the prophet. Yeah, I instantly feel like oh, I'm connection. always drawn. Yeah, That's I'm drawn nice. because you know, uh, you know, Gandhi is one of my spiritual uh, idols, and and Khalil is too. You know, like yeah. these are like I have like two or three people that I look to. It's like you know, he he was a, he was a great philosopher, poet, writer, everything. Uh, yes, yes. I mean. He really reflects the culture of Lebanon, you know, and my heart bleeds when I think that we might lose uh, all this heritage, all this culture, all this beauty, you know, Mm -hmm. I I don't know. Just just like uh, like what we're trying to preserve on the West Side, losing all the culture of Westlos and all that other kind of stuff. Sure, we know about. Yeah, Yeah. we know not in the same formats and and different degrees and ways they're going about it, but the loss of having everything removed so that afterwards there's no more remnants of these people. So yeah. if, if I go to Lebanon, yeah. scary thought, let's, let's say we get past all this and I go to Lebanon. What do, what should I eat? What's the, what's the number <laughs> one thing I should fucking eat? Hey. Cause Mr. Jones was telling yeah. me about Mr. Yeah. Mr. Jones yeah. told me that your father, yeah. from yeah. the moment he, and yeah. I look at, look at, you're going to win my heart over it. If you're a man that cooks, cause I cook. Yeah. I, as soon as he said that, that's like the type of men in my family. Right. Yeah. They all cooked. You yeah, know, they yeah. were in the kitchen more than some of the women. Right. right. But when he told me that, I was like, really, what were you guys eating? And he's like, oh, dude, her dad's a- Yeah. Give us some dishes that go Not- on in your house that your dad made. Like, what do we got to eat? Yeah, what, come what on. Hit eat? us with it. If honestly, yeah, any fucking thing. <laughs> on, on the, on wait a minute, wait a minute. When Hold she on. said that, let me write you, that down. Wait, when she just There's said that right now. Her neck looked a little bit like Lepke's when he starts raising his right. <laughs> All the veins started, just jumped out of her neck. Any I fucking, fucking tell you right now, motherfucker. <laughs> that's what. Honestly, any fucking thing. Anything on the menu, you're going to be sure that is delicious. Now, if you don't like, uh, I don't know, chicken liver, then don't, don't order the chicken liver. If you don't if like chicken like, liver, then go fuck yourself. <laughs> but, but I mean, we have, uh, and what's beautiful in the <laughs> Lebanese, like, like any... If you don't like a chicken liver, then don't you go fucking fuck order yourself. Why would you take the chicken <laughs> liver and fucking dip it in some COVID and go fucking fuck yourself? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what do you want me to tell you? Every fucking thing. The Lebanese food is very, very diverse, and it has it's it has a lot of plant-based food, okay. and uh, it's like really have have plant-based and meat-based, and basically everything that we have, it's vegan. We have a lot of traditional vegan uh, food, which this is why when I went vegan, it was very easy for me. Right. Because we are in the Mediterranean. It's it's there's a lot of plant-based. There's a lot of plant available. Of and, course. And like you. Omega and grains, yeah, just flying into exactly. your hair. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, but what 
I uh, advise you to do is when you go and when you look at the menu, order something that you do not know. Because most of the things that are known is the hummus, the tabbouleh, the shawarma, the kebab. You want Hold it? on, say shawarma Wait. again. Shawarma. Okay, shawarma. That, that's, shawarma. How you, that's how you say shawarma. You don't say shawarma. 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 When you hear people no. say shawarma. When I say shawarma. Say? Shawarma. Say shawarma. 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 Depending on also... Uh, hey, man, uh, can I get you? I got to just say, I'm looking at this yeah, picture right yeah, now, bro. Yeah. Is that your dad? That's my dad. What does your dad bro, look like? I just want to sit... Okay, well, I'm looking at this picture, does man. Does he look like the big ragu? What does he look like? Dude, he's like, <laughs> he's like this, this rich salt of the earth. Yes. Like Mediterranean man. <laughs> yeah. And he's like dark olive skin, bro, yeah. right? With yeah. this white beard and white hair. Yeah. And he just looks like he's going to cook you something really good. Yeah. And you're going to sit down and have some wine with him. That's what's going to happen, bro. Because they've got like this jug of like... It looks like a Chianti or something. And then they've got all this like... Oh, olive oils and fresh olives oh, and, like, and all this food oh, and it's yeah. like you just man dude it's yeah yeah hook, my father uh, I like, I like I, I'm a good judge of character yeah like I learned to as soon as I spot you yeah I kind of you know. yeah. and I'm telling you right now I'd sit down and eat with this man and I'd be I'm stuck sure. at the yeah. table yeah. all night Sicilian yeah. so that Mediterranean your DNA is just flying is absolutely just take a look at this isn't that a table oh, yeah. you want to be at oh was this right? what, what is what is this First the baptism of, all, of uh, Freya? Listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. What I'm looking at, right? Okay, is there's large green leafy greens on the table. There looks like roasted garlic or something there. And like you said, there's a million different little bottles with different colored liquids in it with different caps. And if that's your father, it looks like he's just smelling the drink. Then there's like like three generations of people at the table. Yeah. Uh, what is that? That was the baptism of my little niece, Freya. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... So, yeah, my dad cooks... My dad is in love with food. And it's, I, it's actually my dad and my mother. She cooks amazingly. But it's the love of my dad for food that made me be obsessed with cooking also. Mm -hmm. and, now, food now, and, and, and now I'm looking at... Now, it looks like... I mean, they put a fish on a grill and it's the entire fish. They're it, like, fuck it. Leave the head on. Leave yeah, the fins on. Right? Yeah. That's where all the flavors that is in the sure. eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. What kind of fish is that? I think it was a sea bass, if a I'm not bass, mistaken. Kick his yeah. ass. Sea bass, and then yep. I also see um, looks like grilled vegetables. And then, what kind of a grill is that? It looks like it's a stone oven, or so I can't. I, I, it's actual wood. You're using yeah. actual wood sure, sure, to sure. make the grill. That's amazing. And Lebanon, like most of the times, when you you use wood or, or uh, uh, what kind of coal? wood are they using? I don't know. Charcoal? It depends. Charcoal. It's a Lebanese yeah, charcoal. hickory. No, they actually got wood. Yeah, that's like actual sticks. And who yeah. is this that's uh, grilling the fish? Uh, that's the we're, we're at the, my father's friend's restaurant so it's pro oh that's me I am grilling the fish yeah. let me see <laughs> let me see you know how to grill a fish man I know how to do a lot of things oh now I, ooh, yeah. well, well, I chante, of mon cher. Uh, now I understand why Mr. Cooking, Jones cooking wise no yeah. I'm obsessed with food as I was Wait telling you is that you is that you? Yeah. Oh, my God. The, your hair's a little different there. Yeah, it was long. I cut it. Yeah, look at you. Grilling <laughs> fish. You were putting on the show for Mr. Jones, weren't you? Yeah. You were like, look it. I can do everything, Mr. Jones. I can cook. I can clean. Hey, Rama. <laughs> Khalil Gabran. Huh? Khalil Gabran. Khalil Gabran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Khalil? Khalil Gabran. Khalil. Poet, You got right? anything to say about that? He's a poet. Yeah. yeah. Um... I don't know much about him. Mm. I do. My wife has a book of his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's the book you mentioned. The Prophet. The Prophet. The prophet. Yeah, yeah. She has that book. I, I, that. I was yeah, looking at checking in with one of my spiritual teachers right now. Yeah. Yeah. Rama. Yeah. Thank, Rama. Thank you, Rama. Thank you, Rama. Thank you very much, Rama. <laughs> <laughs> Top Rama. Uh, Rama. How about Rumi? You like Rumi? Yeah, yeah. Of course, man. Mm -hmm. Rumi is one of... He's, he's much older and, uh, than uh, Khalid Gibran. and. Yeah. Rumi is also an incredible philosopher and a poet and a, and a teacher of life, I would mm -hmm. call him. Absolutely. Really. So, okay, but is there a name of a dish? So we've talked about everything's good. What's the traditional Lebanese dish? So, I mean, there are so much. There is uh, mjaddara, 
It, excuse me, I like what? the name of that. Mjadara. It's Mjadara. such a, it's just lentils, I'm naming my onions. next daughter that. Mjadara, you don't Mjadara. want to have that. That's a pretty name. Yeah, <laughs> Mjadara. Mjadara. Yeah, you have a Mjadara, you have a Mluhiye, which is... Mluhiye? It's so good. Oh I can do this all God. day. Can Why we, is it that it, 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 it sounds almost like... Um, it's, it, it sounds almost like... Like when I listen to somebody speak almost uh, Israeli as well, it has like some of this well, same. Of it's course. Yes, yes, yes. Of it's course. very close. I mean, the Hebrew and the and the yeah. Arabic. Yeah. We have and the, we, we, we have. Uh, I love it, man. Yeah. It is so. I've never heard you speak Arabic. Arabic, and I've never heard you say these dishes. But it's really yeah. nice, man. I love. She has like a great pronunciation. Well, of that she's stuff, an right? actress. Great say some more. Yeah. Just say a bunch of dishes. Look at, look at, look at how she humble. It's my native language. I know. Like, <laughs> look at it, look at it. But it's refreshing to hear because we don't okay, hear that. Okay, here you go. I'm going to so, tell you. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, here we go. Okay. Kibib saniye. Kibbenaye. Mluchiye. Mjaddara. 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 Come here, Mjaddara. Lubye bzeet. Let me see. Fatouche is fucking oh, amazing. Fatouche. My favorite salad ever. Oh, I like ever. a fatouche. Yes. Yeah. You have bed awarma. Oh, my oh, God. Bed awarma. 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 Awarma is basically preserved meat. So they oh. take the meat and then they store it in the fat. Oh, the please animal store fat. my meat oh. in your fat. That's a good one. I like that. Very that good. Makes Very sense. good. I like that. Or store my fat in your meat. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That works down so here. So you store it and then you can leave it out. You can uh, use it all through the winter. You oh, know? This yeah. Is yeah. A, use the meat all through the winter. And, and, the, and the, we have a, uh, in the Lebanese uh, uh, cooking culture also, we have a lot of, um, how do you say, mun- munition? No, not... Um, uh, when you store and dry things uh, for the winter. Cured. Cured? Yeah, you oh. cure and you dry vegetable and you kind of preserve and pickle. And we have a lot of yeah, this. Uh, a lot of how this. do you call this? So uh, that you can keep it through the other seasons. Exactly. Like, a larder that you keep a, a storage. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, we practice we practice so tell the truth now let's just cut the shit let's get okay, right down to it you said all the nice stuff yeah, okay right and we've gotten the the generosities and the whatever's out of the way yeah is it true that mr jones have you read the lebanese menu while you guys are being romantic is that true <laughs> he asks you to yeah yeah the menu? yeah say it again what <laughs> <laughs> what are you cooking today oh my god <laughs> <what else? laughs> all right i want to make sure that we yeah. got all the pertinent information for for the fundraiser fund- Yes, again, I'm going to say it. Uh, mm-hmm. Go on the Instagram account of Liban Truck, L I B A N T R O C, and you'll find the link in the bio. It's a very easy step. You click on it, and then you're in the GoFundMe page. And really, whatever you can do would be really, I mean, your generosity will make a huge difference and impact. And please share as much as possible Lebanon really needs the generosity of the whole world we're gonna we're gonna story it up when you're when you're when this goes on yeah we'll story it on the hard luck show that's very yeah. very and we'll really all, guys up on it. I yeah. really appreciate that you've had, you course. have me here and that you're helping me promote this really well absolutely it. well it's, yeah they go they wa- one hand washes the other right listen okay, you're a very you know. accomplished okay. actress yes, here you are. it comes yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're a come a time <laughs> Yes. That we will ask you for, and that time no, they never. She's come. already. We've already asked her for. She's already involved in one of the favors. That's hey, true. Man, let me let she's me tell you something. Already working with H two K. The moment I saw Lepke, mm. I knew that deep deep inside he was a very sensitive man, and I knew that. <laughs> I thought she was going to say. <laughs> as soon as I saw Lepke, I realized I fucked up by dating Mr. Jones. <laughs> No, no, wait, wait. wait. I know that, yes. Please, please. I know that I can, I can bring the woman out of him. <laughs> I know. This is what his, well, this is what his Sounds missing. Sounds like an exorcism. Yeah. We're going to get that woman up out you, boy. She's going to pull <laughs> his meat out of that Oh, fat. man. He's, he's a sensitive dude, and I want to show his, his sensitivity. He is. Yeah. He, he actually is. Sensitive. is. He actually yeah, he really is. is. And yeah, I actually. think with the proper, like, direction, he'll, he'll be a great actor. Oh, my actor. God. That'd be an really. amazing show so, so. of you trying to put... Uh, <laughs> Lucky in touch with his femininity. Of course, it, well, yeah. because listen, here's the thing that's been going on behind the scenes. So some people may say, like, well, wait a second. Why all of a sudden are you doing a show of, of, about Lebanon and about the explosion of Beirut? And we said, mm-hmm. look, it's because we've got Lepke's 
acting coach, teacher, yeah. mentor. Mm. Yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's working with him and she's helping to bring out his feminine side and, and put away some of that mutant side. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, and broaden his abilities as an actor. <laughs> right. And help prepare him for right. what's coming down the road for that guy. <laughs> oh, dude. I, he, I, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, you know something about this. But it's like we've talked to Lepke and we said, do you understand you're going to become famous and like well known are you prepared for that Lekby? and yeah. he would be like oh yeah what do you mean yeah and, like, and we could tell in his eyes he was not prepared for the level of attention no. yeah. and he might lose his mind once everything happens and there's going to be a lot of acting roles thrown towards him yeah right he's going to have a couple million followers at least right and there's going to be some roles that open up because listen anybody can have a big splash the first time that can happen for anybody sure yeah. the question is what's the follow-up and if you don't have the skills and the chops for the follow-up you're fucked that's you're a one hit true. wonder right. yep right so we've brought in that the the greatest acting coach of all time to come in and work <laughs> with lepke so that when that next role comes he's prepared yep. well i think that I think what we're thinking about is that, like, yeah, he's a tough guy. Right. And it's easy for him to play a tough guy role. Right. That's really not Lepke acting. Right. That's but what's right. going to happen right. is those roles are going to show up. Right. And what's going to happen when that role shows up for that transvestite? What right, is Lepi right. going to do? Is he I, think, I think he has it. He has it in him. He needs to be able to embrace yeah. this, man, and execute, you know? Listen, so, so can you give us an idea, like, because you're a professional and you're yeah. well-known and well-regarded, can you give us an idea of some of the... Hey, yeah. Oh. There's Lepke. That's Lepke right there dancing. Oh, there you go. That's Lepke. Here he goes. Kitty, kitty. That's him. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is when his feminine side was starting to come out a little bit. But... <laughs> Listen, the, the thing that's the actual hardest part is, is when the acting um, session is over and then we try to push it all back in. We're like, Lepke. <laughs> you mean reel it back? Yeah, like, yeah. get back, boy. Like, get it. Oh, and man. Like... Once you push it out, there's <laughs> no way back. <laughs> it's like, kind of like uh, the addiction. You know, once you open up that can of worms or you let the gorilla out of the cage, oh, you yeah. know, putting him back yeah, in. Yeah, you're going to go all the, the way. The butterfly doesn't turn into a caterpillar. No, no. sir. And the pickle don't go back to a cucumber. Oh, my God. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. What yeah. are some of the acting exercises that... Because we're going to do a session on air, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a whole acting session where you're going to come in and help him yep. do monologues from the notebook. Yes. yes. Give us a little, yeah, give yeah. us a little preview for Lepke, like some of the different exercises well, you might get. I think to. what I would like to see Lepke doing is something called emotional memory. Oh, I like this. love this already. Which uh, you go back to a specific place, <laughs> place <laughs> and time, and then you recollect uh, this event sensorily. So it's not just oh, that wow. you're right. thinking about it. Right. Like, what are you smelling? What are you seeing? <laughs> he told us about what he was what smelling. Are, what are what are you ago. touching? What are you tasting? You know, where are you? What's under your feet and all that? So I like, want to see Lepke. I, I, I want to see Lepke turn into like Elizabeth Taylor. No, right I want to see. I want to see Lepke. I want. Can you take? Let's take him back all the way to toddler or infancy. Like exactly. A childhood. Yes, exactly. With a blanket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one of his thumb. exactly one of the most right. effective emotional memories like, are taken can from we childhood. Can we recreate Lepke's birth? Can we put pillows and blankets and then like push them out? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's try to do that. Yeah. <laughs> what's another way, like what's another great exercise? Like what, do you have voice warm-up exercises? Oh, of? sure. Of like course. what? Well, first uh, you need to uh, know how to use your diaphragm. diaphragm. <laughs> with uh, Lepke's oh. diaphragm was removed. Dude, Lepke, there's nothing wrong with De Lepke's diaphragm. That guy, he's just... He he can go and go and go. Yeah, yeah. And what about, um, can you get him to emulate different voices, to get in touch with different personalities? Or any animals, Shumahan, maybe Shumahan. farm animals you can emulate? Yeah, we can. There are some animal exercises. But the most <laughs> important <laughs> thing, oh, the most important thing is that we want to find his true voice. Oh, oh man, we've been oh. looking for that forever. This, this, is, 
this is what we want to tap into. We want to go into the real Lepke, you know, the soul of Lepke. Mm. Oh, the yeah. soul of Lepke. And bring show it out. The soul, soul of Lepke. <laughs> See, I think like there's like a Lena Horn or an Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> the trap them in, somebody trap them inside. Yeah. I just want to let loose, man. Let that fam really come out of you. Oh. Lep- man, you're joking, but I'm telling you. <laughs> But I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, some stuff are gonna come up. You're gonna be surprised. Oh, yeah. I can't okay. wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Um, okay, yeah. and jeez. Um, uh, well, I think we gotta kind of maybe leave it right there. I don't. That's the best preview I've ever. Did we miss anything, Steve? Is there anything that we've left on the table on this, um, Mr. No, Jones? No, no, is there? No. I just. I, I think this is. I think this. Um, I'm glad we did this show. We wanted to get you on for a number of reasons. I think that you coming on and um, and helping educate us a little bit on the on what's gone on with um, Lebanon, yes, and that um, we're finding a way for everybody to get involved in helping uh, a yeah. country that's having a hard time helping itself. You know, yeah, um, it's being and cheated by you. its own yeah. hierarchy. You yes, know? thank you so much for having me here. And for giving me the chance to explain. Thank you. I love it. In all reality, Alexandra, you are family. Yep. Okay? I feel the Your same. Blood. I really feel the same. Thank you so Absolutely. much, guys. And Thank you. Uh, listen, once again, from Lamert Park, California, Haroon Coffee. Yep. We're going to say adios from the Hard Luck Show. Hasta la vista. Bye.